but in, 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 you know, to further simplify this, we can talk about basic needs and the satisfaction of basic needs are very much associated with ill-being, right? So what you want to do is you want to reduce ill-being by meeting basic needs, doing a better job meeting basic needs such as safety, security, safety, physiological needs, and, and the like. And then if we're talking about well-being, then again what we need to do is we, uh, you know, much of what we do is to try and, 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 and capture those indicators of well-being so that we can enhance well-being, right? A again, a very, a very important distinction, and rightly so, and rightly so. So, uh, again, um, using Maslow's hierarchy of needs in order to make the distinction between ill-being and well-being, and you'll see how that translates in terms of the actual indicators. So let's look at those indicators and make the distinction between ill-being and well-being at the individual level, individual level. Again, we're going to be making a distinction between individual level of analysis versus community level of analysis as well as societal level of analysis, right? Because the policy implications tend to be varied as such. So at the individual level analysis, again, we're making distinction between outcome indicators versus uh, action indicators. Now, what are those? Outcome indicators are essentially the end result. And you'll, you'll see that when I'll give you the examples. Action indicators are the kinds of indicators that are very much associated with some very specific policies and programs that lead to certain states, that desired states, i.e. outcomes. So action indicators feed into outcome indicators. And again, from a policy perspective, that's, it's extremely important to make those distinctions because if we're focusing on ill-being and human suffering that we want to know exactly what those actions that would lead to the reduction, right, the reduction of ill-being of a specific population. So in the context of out outcome indicators, so let's just zoom in on this, outcome indicators, and in that context we further make the distinction between indicators that are associated with the elements or the parts versus whole. And let me give you an example of what we're talking about here. So on the right, the right hand side of the table, we got indicators of human well-being. The left hand side of the table would be indicators of human ill-being, again, that's what we em the emphasis of human suffering. Again, we make the, the distinction between what you call the parts versus the whole. So relying on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and if we're looking at basic needs, you see how that translates in terms of those indicators. Indicators of disease incidence, pain and health risk. Indicators of psychopathology and emotional suffering. Indicators of disability and daily functioning. Indicators of victimization, house deficiency and adequate shelter, income sufficiency and basic material possessions, financial debt and, and liability, minimum saving and retirement shelter, insurance protection, that kind of thing. These are very much related to basic needs, right? And therefore, we talk about them in terms of ill-being and, of course, um, uh, these are the things that we're trying to reduce. Like we were trying to reduce the, uh, disease incidence and pain and, and health risk and psychopathology and on and on, right? So, you know, in that context, we make the distinction between parts versus whole. So in terms of indicators, some of those indicators are related to specific dimensions of basic needs as broken down as, you know, as such. But then we, we can also focus on the whole, on the whole. Indicators of what we call the tolerable life. Toler I, there's, a, there's quite a, a distinction between indicators of a tolerable life versus indicators of personal happiness. Well, sorry. Again, we're looking at indicators of top
tolerable life versus indicators of personal happiness. You know, so much in terms of the subjective well-being area have focused on personal happiness, but wait a minute. Is personal happiness just the low end of personal happiness is a reflection of tolerable life, human suffering, how people feel about so no, I, I think these are two separate dimensions, independent dimension, and they have to be distinguished again from each other. If you're looking at again the parts uh, indicators of parts of human well-being at the individual level. Again, um, and this is the right hand, so, right hand side of the table. Indicators of sociability and friendships, belongingness and group affiliation, leisure engagement, engagement in sports and recreational activities, occupational status and prestige, economic success, educational attainment, engagement of professional development, engagement in cultural activities, and the arts, engagement in intellectual activities, engagement in spiritual and, and charitable activities. These are the kinds of things that make life worth living. That's quite a difference between, you know, an end state that reflects a life worth living versus human suffering, don't you think? Absolutely. And thank you, Ron, for, for pushing us in that direction. So, these are outcome states, outcome indicators. And again, we made the distinction between parts versus whole. Let's look at action indicators. Sometimes in, in quality of life um, research studies, we talk about those as input indicators. If you use a systems model, we talk about input indicators, probably throughput indicators. Uh, output indicators, and sometimes, you know, if you use the systems model, output indicators are essentially outcome indicators, and action indicators are, are reflect re reflective of uh, what, uh, what a, a lot of system, uh, systems researchers would talk about in terms of input and throughput. Okay. These are the things that would lead to the output, right? So action indicators, in, that, in the context of action indicators, we make the distinction between Things that people do in order to help themselves achieve those desired states. So you see that yellow box at the very left-hand side, indicators of individual efforts versus indicators of institutional efforts. Uh, that institutions help people, individuals, achieve certain desired states, right? So we want to make a distinction between action indicators based on what people do for themselves versus what institutions do for people, right? Let's see how that is operationalized. So when we're, let's look at um, the left-hand side, indicators of human well-being. And again, we're looking at action indicators now. Indicators of individual efforts to re reduce disease incidence, pain, and, and health risks. Well, again, the outcome indicators to reduce disease, in, I mean, essentially the reduction of disease incidence, pain, and health risk. But people do things, and we need to capture what, what are those programs, what are those policies that work, that, well, no, no, that, let me rephrase that. What are those individual efforts? that people, you know, use for themselves to try and, and, and get them to uh, not fall ill, not become sick, right? To reduce their own health risk. You know, eating healthy, for example, that's an individual effort. Refraining from smoking tobacco, right? That would be an individual effort, and therefore, Again, we need to have indicators, action indicators that reflect what people do to help themselves, you know, reduce disease incidence, pain, and, and health risk. The same thing could be said in terms of psychopathology, disability, victimization, housing deficiency. Again, what do people do for themselves, individual efforts? These have to be documented because Again, if we know exactly what people do to help themselves reduce 
human suffering, personal human suffering, right? Then we would be able to systematize this process and generate the kinds of programs that would help individuals adopt those uh, those behaviors that would lead to the reduction of human suffering as such. And, and, and you see that individual efforts related to the enhancement of well-being are drastically different, are likely to be very different from those indicators, from action indicators that are related to, uh, again, the reduction of human well, ill-being. Um, by the way, uh, if you're interested in this, I can send you the slides so that you, you, know, you don't have to strain your eyes. <laughs> so the distinction then in terms of individual efforts versus institutional efforts, the institutional efforts is that, again, we have institutions that are designed to help people reduce suffering and enhance their own well-being. So we need to have some very specific institutional indicators, Inst you know, indicators of institutional efforts. And as you see from the left-hand side, institutional efforts, indicators of institutional efforts reduce disease incidence, pain, and, and health risk. You know, what are those? What, what, what do hospitals do? What clinics do? Right? Well, uh, what are those all the healthcare system and 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 the various uh, and the various organizational entities within do in order to help with that particular endeavor? So that would be an example of institutional efforts, and the same thing can be said on the right hand side of the table. Again, we're looking at action indicators of human well-being. So if you're getting the gist of it, we can do the same kind of analysis, break things down at the community level now. So we're not dealing at the individual level now, we, we're looking at indicators of ill-being versus uh, well-being at the community level. And in, in that context, we have you know, outcome indicators and we have indicators of parts versus indicators of whole. And in terms of action indicators, now we're not dealing with individual efforts because we're dealing with, again, a, an emergent whole, which is at the community. And in that context, we have specific institutions, right, that, uh, are, that engage in certain efforts designed to reduce human suffering. Right? So those are government institutions, those are business institutions, those are efforts by NGOs. And again, example, if we look at the example, if we look at the outcomes, the outcomes again, um, uh, at the community level, the, the, the nature of those indicators change and uh, on the human well-being side, we, we, at the community, you can capture work productivity and income, consumption of non-basic goods and services, the quality of leisure and recreational activities. Now, this is at the community level. Not, this is not what's happening at the individual. For a given individual, it's a given community, i.e., let's say, in a place like Seoul, Korea, right? educational attainment, and, 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 the, and, and again, these are indicators of parts which are different from indicators that capture the well-being of the community at large, which would be something like community cohesion and growth, right? Community cohesion and growth, that is an indicator that captures the well-being of the whole community, which is different from the well-being of the individual, which is to be contrasted with Again, if you're looking at ill-being, indicators of community survival and resilience, right? And we have a wonderful set of measures that, again, that would capture those types of constructs. But when it comes to also parts, we've got indicators of environmental pollution, of disease incidents, crime and safety, housing conditions, unemployment, poverty, homelessness, cost of living community infrastructure, illiteracy and lack of job skills, population density and crowdedness. Again, at the community level. And I'm running out of time, so. Um, 
I think you're getting the gist of this now since I've made those distinctions. So, you know, if you're looking at action indicators, what the government is doing, those would be examples of what the government in, is doing, and, and, and governments, right? And, and therefore, we need to flesh out those indicators by what the governments um, do in order to alleviate human suffering, uh, i.e. reduction of human ill-being. Government efforts to reduce environmental pollution, government's efforts to reduce health-related ill-being, and so forth, which would be very different from something like, you know, indicators of government efforts to enhance the quality of community landscape. Ah, that's a beautification program. We're not dealing with human suffering. It's a very different animal. And and then we, we have business. We got business efforts and you know, all kinds of businesses engage in corporate social responsibility and, and they do all kinds of wonderful things for the community uh, in terms of alleviating poverty and addressing homelessness versus, you know, um, uh, sponsoring arts and culture programs. Again, these have to be captured and, and, and distinguished from others. And, and again, these would be examples of how this is fleshed out. And finally, we can, uh, we can talk about the same kind of thing at the societal level, at the country level. And in that context, again, we have outcome indicators, we have action indicators of well-being versus ill-being, we've got indicators of parts versus whole, we've got action indicators at the, for different kinds of institutions, in, you know, at, you know, when we're talking about institutional efforts, here we're talking about government or business, uh, institutions do, NGOs, as well as international agencies, international institutions. And, and therefore, we need to make those distinctions loud and clear and capture all these indicators because once we make those distinctions, then the public policy implications of those distinctions become quite evident. Thank you. Yeah, started off. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not
저희 그 점심에는 햄버거 나오는데 그거 1층에서 나눠주고 그거 드셔도 되고 지금 커피랑 뭐 마음대로 함께 드세요 네. 그리고 이거 다 끝나.. 아 잠깐 그럼 마지막에는 아예 다른 분들이 계시거든요 그럼 이 파일들을 어 오늘 받으면 되는데 어떻게 제가 그럼 그분을 오면 그때 얘기할게요 오늘이 끝이야. 오늘이 끝이야. 어, 오늘 마지막.